This is good. Okay. So first first question. So this was again assignment that was due on uh, Friday. If you haven't done it, please do it. Um, I guess although starting with week three, I can no longer say if you don't do it, you will get blocked out of the rest of the course. Doesn't work that way anymore, for better or worse. But I do want people to aim for 100% completion. So um, let me ask this question. Uh, taking a frame attached to, yeah, okay. So taking a frame attached, which are initial frames, A, B, C, D, okay. Copilot, let's ask. Um, type of frame for each object. Uh, I guess both, I think. Um, this is a perplexity feature. It kind of asks for follow-up question if it's not clear from your initial prompt, prompt what you might be looking for. So, um, okay, A, car moving at constant velocity. There should be inertial reference frame, good. Car that is accelerating, right, no inertial. An elevator in free fall. Um, <laughs> yeah, this is a, a potentially complicated question. Uh, I, I do believe it's answered correctly. You can probably follow up on these links to so three and uh, reference three and four, three and seven. Um, so you know, so it's um, so locally, it's definitely right. If you're the person within the elevator, you will feel like the frame you are in is the inertial reference frame. Um, but if we are being referenced to, to someone um, who's on Earth looking at the falling elevator, you are accelerating. You are not in an inertial reference frame. But uh, this is uh, I, this is a good answer. I, I would accept this as being correct. Um, although I might want more explanation of the type that would be, let's say, I assume uh, this reference will have some bit of an explanation. Uh, free falling, <laughs> special relativity. Uh, longer answer is small enough. Yeah, this is describing locally co-moving inertial reference frame. Um, <laughs> yeah, anyways, long, the answer is it's complicated. You could attach, uh, there's a way to attach inertial reference frame there. D, a car that is accelerating. Wait, what? Oh, it's space capsule. Yeah, D, space capsule orbiting Earth. That, um, okay, because it said locally, I will accept that as being correct. Um, because you know it's again uh, in a free fall scenario. So when something is in free fall, uh, refer reference to someone who's an earthbound observer, that's not an inertial reference frame because it's undergoing gravitational acceleration. Um, an elevator descending uniformly is an inertial reference frame. Yeah, good. Yeah. Wow. These are all uh, correct answers. <laughs> that's why I checked this because uh, uh, maybe next semester I won't have to check it again, but. Um, I mean, quality of these answers compared to last semester when, you know, GPT, uh, chat GPT was relatively new. This is um, much better answers, uh, which, you know, I, I think what it means is this might be becoming a good learning tool for you because chat GPT, frankly, was wrong so often and was hallucinating things that I would never recommend it as a learning tool for students. But this might be because um, these are actually good quality answers with uh, references. So the, really the uh, caution for you is that you're using this to learn, not to cut corners. Because <laughs> in the end, what matters is what physics you know. Um, okay, it's correct, incorrect. Yeah, okay. Mass and weight are, they are not the same thing. Uh, they are, Ooh, in, yeah, incorrect. Okay, good. Mass is measure of amount of matter. Weight is amount of yeah force, gravitational force. Um, yeah, yeah. So you know you can't convert kilograms to pounds. Kilogram is unit of mass, and pound is unit of force. Um, you could talk about uh, how many kilograms would an object need to have to weigh one pound on Earth, but it's that's the only way you can convert kilogram to pound. Uh, if an object has no weight, it must have no mass. Not necessarily. 
right incorrect uh, in free fall right uh, in which case uh, it would have no uh, apparent mass um, the, or sorry no apparent weight uh, it would still have weight in the way we define the word weight a uh, gravitational force in free fall there is still gravitational force uh, microgravity environment is free fall um, uh, this isn't quite right um, because uh, astronauts in orbit, there's a significant gravitational force on them. So uh, to make a gravitational force at zero, you actually have to move far away from Earth, move far away from Sun, other planets, sources of gravity. That's the only way to actually make a gravity zero rather than the distinction. So I'll uh, ask uh, regarding the answer, could you um, distinguish between apparent weight and weight. Those two words are two different things. The answer here would be correct if wherever it says weight, if you refer to apparent weight. Okay, let me do C and D, e, C, D, E before I ask that. See if the weight of object bar varies, so must the mass? No. If gravitational force changes, then um, weight could change. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I'm sure that's Correct, yeah, yeah, good. The mass and inertia are different concepts. Um, <laughs> that could be a long answer, huh? Incorrect, okay. That could be the correct response, let's see. They are related to concepts. Inertia is the property of uh, the change in motion, mass and... Uh, yeah, yeah, I would say this is a little bit incomplete. So mass, um, later on, we'll see that it includes the idea of uh, gravitational charge, meaning um, mass is the thing that produces gravitational force. Uh, we're not covering it right now. We'll do it later. I think chapter 10 or in a little bit when we do uh, Newton's law of universal gravitation. Um, but, uh, Correct enough. Um, it's, yeah. Weight is always proportional to mass. Yes, correct. Even when weight is zero, you know, mass times zero is proportional to mass. So, yeah. All right. Let's ask this follow-up question. Um, yes. Because if it explains those differences correctly, then um, the fact that it mixed up the answer a little bit. Maybe it's not uh, all that um, significant. Weight is, yeah, force due to gravity. That's it. Apparent weight is perceived <laughs> affected, yeah. Strength of gravitational field. Um, yeah, I guess uh, um, so uh, yeah, yeah. So this is, I think, the key sentence for this class. So the way we will use the term apparent weight, uh, recognizing that it might not be the standard, there might not be a way to standardize it across all the different people who are competent in physics. The way we do it in this class, we will tie apparent weight specifically to normal force. So, um, and you know, it might not always be the case because if you are floating in water, then that buoyancy does affect uh, how you perceive your weight. Um, to make calculations easier, whenever we say apparent weight, it'll be talking about normal force. Because uh, it's kind of calculationally easier. All right, last question. Uh, oh, yeah, I'm interested in this one. So Newton's third law scenarios, it's always challenging. Um, challenging for students, challenging for Czech tutors. Uh, challenging for uh, generative AI. This is the question that ChatGPT was always uh, missing, not getting 100% correct. Let's see if uh, 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 GPT-4 gets it. So um, one thing to uh, be mindful when you're identifying action reaction forces is that you should be identifying a pair of forces not uh, uh, that occur simultaneously, not a cause and effect kind of way. So Earth attracts the moon and right, that's the action force. And the reaction force is, yeah, that equal meaning equal in magnitude, opposite meaning opposite in direction. Boy kicks the football, 
for the exertion force on the football, right? Football, the exertion equal and opposite force on, that's correct. Rocket accelerates upward. Yeah, that's uh, going to be a little bit more challenging. So, action, rocket exerts a force on the exhaust gases, expelling the gases downward. The exhaust gas equal and opposite. Yeah, that's correct. By the way, a uh, uh, feature of uh, having correctly chosen action and reaction force is you can flip them. And it should still make sense. It might not be as natural. Like if you flip the action reaction here, it might not be natural to say the action force is the football exerts a uh, force on the boy's foot. Uh, but it should still make sense because it's not cause and effect. It's two things that are occurring simultaneously. So like an equation, you can just flip the order and uh, it should still make some sense, even if it might not be fully, it might not feel natural. It's okay. A car accelerates forward, right? There, you should be describing force between tire and the ground. So tire is a force on the ground, pushing it, pushing the ground backward. The ground exerts a force on the tire. Propel, yeah, that's correct. <laughs> High jumper jumps. Jumper exits a force on the ground, pushing it downward. Ground, yeah, that's correct. <laughs> a bullet is shot from the gun. A gun exerts a force on the bullet. Uh, yeah, it, this is missing some details, but it's fine. Um, um, cause, you know, how does the gun exert a force? Well, through the, the, the gas that's expanding within the gun barrel. Uh, but this is kind of the simplified picture that is correct. So yeah, um, this is all correct answers. I guess the one thing that uh, this text generative AI can do is drawing pictures. So um, uh, on, in this week's lecture material, you will see uh, a lot of, uh, many more additional examples of free body diagram drawing. And in some of them that involve more than one object, you will see examples of the action reaction forces being drawn. Um, and in terms of getting a text description of what the action reaction forces are, uh, this is getting it right. And it's the five or six, one, two, three, four, five, six, six scenarios it's been given, it answered them all correctly.